Hey everybody, Mark Agnese here in the back room of Norman's Rare Guitars. Welcome back to another episode of Guitar of the Day. Woo! So, yeah, yesterday was fun. Went down to the whiskey a go go on the Sunset Strip. Got to hang out with Slash for a little bit. I uh, got to look at all the gear and stuff. Oh, I'm sorry, did you not hear that? Yeah, I got to hang out with Slash for a little bit. Slash, curly hair, top hat, Les Paul, that. Was it fun? That one, yeah, it's pretty cool. We had fun. Shot some uh, some exclusive content for the uh, All Guitar Network that'll be coming soon, and uh, had some fun. A few laughs. It was a gas. Sat in traffic for a while. <laughs> but it was all good. Just thank you, Slash, for uh, giving us the access yesterday. Um, let's see what else. Happy birthday, Jackie Tombs. Happy birthday from uh, Pat and the kids. Aww. I call him. Yeah, one sec. Also, Jen Jen showed me this. Um, we missed this. But I, I had to read it. She made me read it, and I was like, all right, give this guy a shout out. It's like, uh, my birthday was uh, September 4th. I was supposed to go see the Foo Fighters concert for my birthday. Got tickets last November. However, Dave lost his voice in Seattle, and they rescheduled at the last minute. I cannot make the new date, so I'm kind of bummed out. And a sympathy birthday shout out. Hey, man, it's a week late. Well, 10 days late. Sorry, dude. That sucks. Happy birthday. Uh, Chris Titrib. Titrib? Teacher. Happy Chris. birthday. Happy belated birthday, dude. That sucks. I remember I had tickets to go see uh, Beyonce. Uh, not Beyonce. Everything is not Beyonce. Uh, Rage Against the Machine and the Beastie Boys. We're going to do a tour together. And, and something happened to one of the Beastie Boys, and uh, they had to pull out. They ended up canceling the whole tour. And then freaking Zach Taylor wrote to left Rage Against the Machine. I never got to see Rage. I mean, yeah. I Aww. feel you, homie. That sucks. It's the worst. Uh, let's see. It's Flat Top Friday. Man, we had some cool pearl last week. We got something real shiny and flashy this week, too. You guys are going to like it. Come on back. Check this out. Oh, I don't even remember what year this is from, to be perfectly honest. But this is a Martin D45 Mike Longworth. Number 76 out of 91 that they made. Adirondack spruce top, East Indian rosewood back and sides. Pearl absolutely freaking everywhere you look the way we like it. It's gorgeous. Remember Chad. We like that, Chad. Who's Chad? I know Chad. <laughs> Pain in my ass. Um, so we've done a couple of uh, deep... How was the kit? It's a snug fit, all right? It's a the worst. Sorry. Um, yeah, these were made, I mean, these were made in memory of Mike, and he passed away in 2003, so this is from, you know, the early 2000s, early to mid-2000s there. Um, but yeah, D45. <sighs> Look at all that pearl, man. Let me see, let me see. I love the neck joint, it's my favorite, because that's where it all comes together. It's like, boom, 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 boom. So much freaking pearl. <laughs> so yeah, like we thought we did the Roy Rogers last week. Was that last week? Mm, All the weeks are running together. Yeah. A couple weeks. Probably last week. The 45 is the top of the line. Um, and that OM45 was the top of the line guitar until they came out with this, the D45, which was the big body for the time. The Dreadnought was kind of groundbreaking in size in terms of both volume, sound, tone, everything. Uh, it was really when they hit it. So these 45s, first one was made for Gene Autry, um, but they only made 91 of these uh, in the original you know, run of D45, which is, you know, obviously they did 91 reissues of these as well to kind of remember. Something weird in 91. I think there's 91 original Karina Flying Vs as well. 91's one of those weird number. Oh, some of you number people out there, you feel free to weigh in. 91. But yeah, top of the line. Pearl everywhere you look. This one's got the Adirondack top. Again, the toner. The toner is giving me tone. Tortoise guard. Uh, like we gotta talk about Mike Longworth, really, because um, who's Mike Longworth? Mike uh, was a very uh, a Martin historian, but a lot more than that. But he did write quite a few books on the history of Martin guitars. Um, he was kind of the expert on the Martin stuff. But Mike was an inlay artist, and when he got out of the military, uh, he was in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He had a repair shop where he fixed a lot of stringed instruments. But what he specialized in was converting Martin D28s 
into D45s. So adding all of that, per, you know, basically if you have a D28, you have a spruce top and a rosewood back in size, it's just very plain. So he would then convert by adding all that pearl and kind of converting them into D45s. Remember, in the 40s, they stopped making the, the, the D45s in the early 40s, and then that model does not exist until 1968, I believe was the year they bring it back. Uh, no, no, I think it was far longer. That, that was when they bring the 41s. I should have did my research, but I got to do two of these today because somebody's going out of town. But yeah, there's a really long lull of time where there's no D45 production, where there's really not a lot of pearl work going on at Martin at all. But this guy, Mike Longworth, was doing so many conversions on these that Martin found out about it. Martin started sending them guitars to start doing the pearl work. And then in the 60s, with the boom and folk music and, and acoustic guitar boom, there really started to become a demand for D45s again. And it was a little too much of a workload for Mike to do from out of state. So they made a whole new division at Martin for doing, for pearl work. And they brought Mike in and he taught a whole new generation of inlay people how to inlay guitars. Uh, and he was there with Martin all the way to the end. They're really spectacular to look at. I mean, Chad <coughs> doesn't like pearl. Little too gaudy. Really, dude? You missed the point. Look how, it's just top of the line. If you like top of the line things, and I do, I like nice stuff. As nice as it gets, man. The most collectible guitars of all time. Um, this one, again, number 76 of the 91 made to commemorate Mike and all of his cool work for more guitars. It's Flat Top Friday. It's a D45. Let's go to the couch. We'll tickle it. We'll bang on it. We'll have a great time. Let's go do it. All right, we're out front. We have the Martin D45 Mike Longworth edition. This is number 76 of 91. Addy Top, Indian Rosewood back and sides. Let's put it through the paces real quick. We'll start with the fingers and uh, we'll switch to a pick here in just a minute. Sing back up there. Cool, let's grab the flat pick, set this thing a little bit harder, see how this top starts to respond to a little bit of right hand here.
what a tone. That's the top of the line right there, kids. From Martin, it's a D45 Mike Longworth Special Edition, number 76 of 91 made, just like the original pre-war ones. Adirondack spruce top, Indian rosewood back and sides towards guard. Pearl, absolutely everywhere you look. There is your flat, fl uh, flat top <laughs> Friday for this week. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Mark Agnesi. Follow the store at Norman's Rare Guitars. And check this and the rest of these guitars out online at normansrareguitars.com. We'll see you guys back here again tomorrow for an all-new episode of Guitar of the Day. Spoiler alert. It's freaking Saturday. See you then. Peace. Bye. Right.